Let's talk Seattle Seahawks now, where interesting little storyline popping up here. So ESPN was going through all the potential moves for the Seahawks, and uh, Brady Henderson, their beat writer for Seattle, said the Seahawks are going to make a trade to shed some salary and get some draft picks. Now, the Seahawks have limited cap space and limited draft picks. So from that perspective, it makes sense. However, if you're going to move on from a significant salary to free up some money and get a draft pick back, it's got to be somebody good. You're not going to be able to move on from like a Trey Flowers or a Rashad Penny and get a premium draft pick back. Yeah, you can get maybe one of those things done with money or draft pick space or draft capital, but that's not really all that likely. You have to trade value in order to get value back. That is important when we go through the list of names, by the way, that Brady Henderson mentioned as potential trade sh uh, candidates and, and shedding the salary. So six names to go through here. Tyler Lockett, who carries an almost $15 million cap hit. Jaron Reed, a defense tackle with almost $14 million cap hit. Dwayne Brown, a very, very good starting left tackle. Those are the first three. Jamal Adams and Quandre Diggs, so two safeties, one making almost 10, one making over six. And then Brandon Shell, who was a nice little surprise for Seattle at right tackle. Before we go player by player as it relates to, to these potential trade candidates, is this something she, Seattle should do in general? Type in Y for yes, or you can type in N for no. Get your votes in. Should Seattle trade away a player? Let's go to Tyler Lockett. Oh, by, by the way, before I forget, all six of these guys are on the last year of their contract. So in reality, you can save money two ways. You could trade slash cut them, or you could restructure their contracts and extend them, and that would bring down their cap hit in this year and push it off down the road. Lock it. Again, the significant cap hit there. You save 12, almost 13 million if you were to trade him, incur that 2 million of dead money. It's a lot of money to, 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 to save, right? It's also Tyler Lockett. I don't want to trade him because I think he and DK Metcalf make one of the best one-two punches at wide receiver. Tyler Lockett, folks, is on the right side of 30 still, though he does turn 30 very shortly. I'm going to extend him. That's the route I would go with Tyler Lockett. Yeah, he's going to have 100 catch, 1,000 yard, 10 touchdown, great ratio, by the way. I'm paying him. I'm not trading away Tyler Lockett, because guess what? If I do, well, now i got a huge hole at receiver i got to fill with whatever money or draft pick I saved. Let's go to Jamal Adams now, the player, the Seahawks, who have a ton to get, not even an offseason ago. Multiple draft picks, including their first this year and their first next year. Seattle wants to extend him because they already traded for him. There's actually zero dead money if Adams were to be traded by the Seahawks. Again, not the route I really want to go because this is Jamal Adams. I think I can pay him and bring down his salary cap hit. And at that point... I watched Jamal Adams be a fantastic blitzer. Yes, I want more from him in coverage. I am happy to make Jamal Adams the highest paid safety in the NFL. If I were rebuilding, which I don't believe Seattle is, that is a different conversation because I feel pretty confident saying Adams of the guys on this list might fetch me the most back in return, although it would not be as much as what Seattle gave up to get him not that long ago. Let's go to Jaron Reed now, who he was better as the year went along. Now, he would create a significant hole at defensive tackle if you were to trade. You'd also eat $5 million of his total cap hit, saving you just under $9 million. But if you're trying to find someone who makes sense to trade away, and given how badly NFL teams are searching for pass rush help from the interior, if you force me to do one, I think Jaron Reed is one of the guys I would consider. I would rather extend him and try to reduce his fully guaranteed because I worry about him being a full-fledged impact guy, but I would at least consider Jaron Reed. So of the guys we've gone through so far, Reed's one I would at least consider trading away if I were Seattle. All right, over to Quandre Diggs now, who I think it's he and Reed make the most sense. You could save over $6.5 if you were to trade him. And I think if you're Seattle... With both Diggs and Adams on the last years of their deal and needs elsewhere, 
as much as I like Diggs, and I love him a lot, I think they have to make a decision here. Do you want to pay Jamal Adams like 15 plus million a year? And then do you want to play Quandre, or pay Quandre Diggs almost seven, eight, something like that? Because I think he'll get that on the open market pretty easily. Do you want to commit over 20 million to two safeties with needs on the offensive line and at cornerback? Maybe not what you want to do. So I think of the two guys who, if you're going to make a deal, you should consider trading away, I think it's Jaron Reed or it's Quandre Diggs. Ideally, you just pay all of them, extend them, but Seattle might not want to do that. So I'm forcing you guys to pick one for me. If you have to trade one of these guys, who is it? Type R for Jaron Reed or type in D for Quandre Diggs. I did want to group the two offensive linemen together here. Dwayne Brown would save you a lot, $11.35 million if you were to trade him. However, uh, Russell Wilson has made a very big deal about wanting to have better offensive line play, and he's clearly not the happiest camper right now in Seattle. So you, you know the best way to upset your franchise quarterback? Trade away his best offensive lineman to save $11 million bucks. And I know that Dwayne Brown is aging. And he is an older player. He's already 35 years old, and he's got maybe a couple more years left in him. What I would rather do, unless Brown told me he's going to retire after the season, I would extend it. Maybe it's a one year or an extra two years tacked on, bring down his cap hit this year, push it off into the future when the salary cap jumps way up from the big time TV mega deals coming. Brandon Shell's next up here. Oh, he was a nice find in free agency. I don't think he's an elite right tackle by any means. But when healthy, the O-line was better with him. And I think by a pretty easy margin, which isn't saying much, he's the second best offensive tackle on this team. He's not that expensive. It's barely over $5.3 million. You only save 3.5 by trading him. So, or yeah, only save 3.35 by trading him. Thank you, Producer Sam. So if you were to trade him, you'd probably get at least a mid-round pick back. But you're not going to find a quality tackle with the money you save by moving on from him, the draft pick you get back probably is enough. Maybe you can combine the two somehow and fill some other needs, but I don't want to move on from one of these offensive linemen. If you're trading away a player to save some salary, I think it's got to be someone like a Jaron Reed or a Quandre Diggs, even though that does open up needs elsewhere. So again, the six trade candidates here for the Seahawks. Tyler Lockett, not a fan. Jaron Reed, okay, you, you, you could talk me into it. Dwayne Brown, also not a fan. Jamal Adams, I'm going to pay him right now because he's going to be expensive. So for Adams, I'm paying that guy. Quandre Diggs, maybe I don't want to pay two safeties. If that were the case, maybe I can explore something a little bit different there and work a trade for him or Jaron Reed. Or maybe it's Brandon Shell. I don't want to do that either because I want to keep my offensive lineman, but those are six names mentioned by ESPN. It is almost St. Patrick's Day, so if you're looking for some St. Patrick's Day steam gear available, go over to chatsports.com slash St. Patrick's. Do not worry, that link will be in the comments, and it will be in the description. The Seahawks, a natural fit there, of course, for the green, but they got them for all 32 NFL teams. They are available at chatsports.com slash St. Patrick's. And don't worry, the link will be in the comments and in the description, so all you guys got to do is... Click and go shop. Perfect in case you're able to do anything this St. Patrick's Day. And, of course, in the future, that way you can dress up appropriately for the theme day and still rep your favorite NFL team in the process. Let's talk now 17-game season here for the NFL. Peter King reports that a 17-game season is highly likely for 2021. Not, not, not a huge surprise. This has been, again, relatively expected here. The league calendar, King reports, by the way, is set to be moved back a week. No extra bye week added. That means the Super Bowl occurs on February 13th next year, hypothetically speaking. On top of that, uh, Peter King also mentions that the AFC is likely to host the extra game in 2021. Now, they'll rotate AFC, then NFC, AFC, then NFC. It's also fairly weird. Because um, the crossover games are, are not like as patterned as you might think. Like you could think, oh, well, maybe they'll just put the East teams this year, the North teams against the North teams, 
not what they would be doing. So we do know, though, what the matchups would be. So let's go matchup by matchup here, right? It is the AFC hosting. So NFC East taking on the AFC East. Washington at Buffalo. Giants at Dolphins. Cowboys at Patriots. Eagles at Jets. This is ordered, of course, by where the teams finish. The number one seed in the NFC East. It's the number one seed in the AFC East. Moving on now here. Seahawks at Steelers. Pretty intriguing. Rams at the Baltimore Ravens. Cardinals at Browns. Niners at the Bengals there. So keeping moving on here. The Saints at the Titans. Kind of intriguing depending on what the quarterback situation looks like for New Orleans. Bucks at the Colts. Oh, Brady against the Colts. That's a fun one right there. The Panthers at the Texans. And then the Falcons at the Jags. So potentially could be Trevor Lawrence against Matt Ryan at quarterback. The Packers at the Chiefs, I think the best one of this group. That, that's, an, that's an awesome game. That one, I promise you, will be hyped as a potential Super Bowl preview. The Bears at the Raiders, call it the Khalil Mack revenge game. The Vikings at the Chargers. And then the Lions at the Broncos, which exists. Not the most sexy matchup, if we're being honest there.